It's an average day at Site 43 of the SCP Foundation, and a new researcher has arrived for her first day at the site. She fills out an intimidating stack of onboarding paperwork, takes a picture for her new ID badge, and meets her direct supervisor. There's something you should probably know about working at this site, he begins, but an alarm sounds down the hall, and he has to rush away to attend to it. We'll finish this later, don't move! He calls to her before he disappears from sight. Then she's left alone, twiddling her thumbs, shifting from foot to foot, and looking at her new workplace. It looks like any other foundation site for the most part. One unusual thing does catch her eye, though. There are mirrors everywhere, all along the walls of the hallway, seemingly all the way down until the hallway bends out of sight. What could those possibly be for? As she runs through the possibilities in her head, she hears the squeaking wheels of a mop cart coming toward her. A janitor is making his way across the floor, mopping at the tiles as he goes. He has a pair of headphones covering his ears, and she thinks about interrupting him to ask about the mirrors, but doesn't want to disturb him. Then, she spots something just behind the janitor, reflected in the mirror, that makes her scream and drop her clipboard. There is a face, ashen and ghastly, like some horrible phantom out of a scary story. She spins around, expecting to see the horrible face lurking behind her, but there's nothing there. Whatever the thing is, it's just in the mirror. When her supervisor returns, he finds her pale and sweating, her hands shaking. She stumbles over her words, trying to tell him what she just saw. He laughs at her wide-eyed <laughs> expression and says, Oh, don't worry, that's just Philip and his constant companion. Then, he tells her all about SCP-5056. SCP-5056 is a hairless humanoid entity with gray matte skin and three slash-like scars on its face, resembling the placement of eyes and a mouth. It does not have a physical, corporeal form, at least on the visual spectrum, and can only be seen in reflective surfaces. It appears to prefer manifesting in glass, especially mirrors and lenses. Any equipment or media that captures the entity's image will begin to degrade on an atomic level. Though anyone can see SCP-5056 when it appears in a reflective surface, only one person is able to hear it speak. Philip E. Deering, also referred to as SCP-5056-B. Philip Deering is a white man with brown eyes and brown hair, standing at 172 centimeters tall. He joined the staff of SCP Foundation Site-43 as a custodian in July of 1999, and for his first three years of service, there was nothing notable about him. He was a pleasant man, though occasionally prone to bouts of depression, and was a reliable employee. In September of 2002, however, his behavior changed following a disastrous incident involving anomalous materials in a chromatic abatement facility AAF-D. After this incident occurred, Philip began exhibiting signs of auditory hallucinations, reacting to sounds that no one else could hear. At first, this was thought to be the result of a mental health episode brought on by stress and trauma, but the discovery of SCP-5056 soon proved that the voice he was hearing was not, in fact, in his head. Since the first day it appeared to him, SCP-5056 has followed Philip everywhere he goes. It has not expressed interest in any other people or entities, except for situations where it felt that Philip was being threatened. It is aware of other entities, it simply does not care about them. As for its behavior toward Philip, SCP-5056 has historically behaved in a way opposite to Philip's emotional needs. When Philip is trying to sleep, it opens its mouth scar and screams. It picks verbal fights with him when he is overwhelmed or sad, including reminding him of estranged family members, awkward social interactions, and personal failings. He has gotten used to his companion over the years, even giving notes on its less-than-effective insults and encouraging creativity. He has even given the entity a nickname, Doug. SCP-5056 becomes enraged when separated from Philip, and if there is no available reflective surface upon which it can manifest and speak to him, it will begin to act out. After nine seconds have passed without SCP-5056 having access to Philip, it will begin to vibrate at an intense speed and emit an endless 119 decibel sound that reverberates through the entirety of Site-43. As soon as Philip is returned to 5056's line of sight, both the sound and the vibrating will immediately stop. Staff in the area have been made aware of the entity's presence and its aggressive tendencies. Following an incident involving Dr. Bradbury, who experienced immense psychological distress after SCP-5056 appeared in one of the lenses of her eyeglasses that led to her eventual resignation, no one wearing glasses or any other reflective eyewear is permitted to interact with Philip or SCP-5056. 
Because SCP-5056 has no physical body, it cannot be truly contained in a traditional sense. However, its location seems to be bound to Phillips, and therefore limiting Phillips' movements to Site-43 has provided the Foundation with a workable solution. Aside from the issue with Dr. Bradbury, there has only been one other notable incident involving SCP-5056 so far. On January 23, 2003, Dr. Falkirk decided to perform an experiment that would prove Philip was not necessary for the containment of SCP-5056. Philip was sent to an observation room and instructed to turn on recording equipment. In the room, there was a steel table, a steel chair, and a hand mirror. After Philip sat down in the room, SCP-5056 warned him to get out. He ignored it and proceeded to talk with Dr. Falkirk. Falkirk gave an order to initiate phase two of the experiment, and Philip began to have trouble breathing. After several seconds, he lost consciousness. Dr. Falkirk turned his and his assistant's attention to the mirror, where SCP-5056 was still present. It became enraged, yelling for Philip, and attacked Dr. Falkirk. Though the specific details of the attack are lost from official records, he was subsequently given medical treatment for blood loss, facial injuries, and the loss of his left eye. He has been under intensive psychological care ever since. Though no one but Philip is able to hear a word SCP-5056 says, any recording device that he activates will pick up the entity's voice. In order to give the research team a better sense of SCP-5056's behavior, Philip's uniform contains a microphone that is always on and always recording his conversations. It has, over the years, picked up everything that passes between Philip and the world around him, from his conversations with co-workers to the tiny torments and verbal barbs from SCP-5056. In 2020, however, the microphone recorded a series of events that would change Philip and his relationship to the anomaly in the mirror forever. Philip was struggling with a sense of crushing isolation, with the majority of his social interaction coming from Dr. Ngo and SCP-5056. The only bright spot in his days was the presence of Chief Amelia Terosian of the janitorial and maintenance section, who would often visit Philip to chat while he was mopping. They spoke regularly for months, joking with each other about work, Amelia asking questions about Philip's life with 5056, all while the entity needled Philip about his apparent crush on Amelia. On September 9, 2020, however, Amelia confessed something. She returned his feelings. The audio transcription from this day captured this revelation. I never really thought. I didn't think you… Philip began. Really? Really, Amelia retorted. Yeah, really. Well, I mean, I didn't think you… either, she admitted. Philip laughed at this. Are you kidding? You've got to be kidding. I mean, you're… A moment of silence passed between the two, the air crackling with nervous excitement. How long… he began. She interrupted. Since I met you. He laughed again, a giddy sound. You had that on speed dial. Well, how long? She started. This time, he interrupted. Since I met you. They both laughed for a long time before falling silent once again. What are you thinking about? Amelia asked. Can't you tell? She shook her head. No? Confusing me with your anxiety surrogate? He hasn't said a word tonight. Philip smiled softly at this. I must not have any anxieties right now. The two quickly developed a romantic relationship, Philip brushing off the doubts that SCP-5056 tried to plant in his mind. On June 11, 2021, Dr. Ngo conducted Philip's annual psychological review, and they discussed the notable changes in his demeanor and worldview. The audio from the session has been transcribed. Thanks for letting me do this a day early, Philip began. Well, hey, I have a social engagement tomorrow, Dr. Ngo replied. Philip laughed heartily at that. You know, that might be the first time I've heard you laugh. Let's talk about that. SCP-5056 started to speak. Yes, let's talk about… But Philip cut it off. About how humorless and morose I am? The entity was stunned into silence. Dr. Ngo spoke up. Was he about to say that? Are you finishing his thoughts now? Why not? They used to be my thoughts. What changed? SCP-5056 spoke up again. Nothing. Philip disagreed. A lot of things. Some of them because of Doug. Some of them because of me. Some of them… Chief Tarosian. Dr. Ngo finished the thought for him. Yeah. I guess I didn't really care about improving myself until I had someone to improve for. Doug beat a lot of my flaws out of me. There just wasn't enough room in my head for self-pity or self-loathing or even selfishness with him nattering away in the background all day every day. But Amy gave me something to actually work toward. I actually… This time, 5056 finished his thought. You stopped wasting your life. Go on, 
Dr. Nyo encouraged. It feels strange to say, because this has been a terrible year all over, but it still meant so much to me. Dr. Nyo nodded. You achieved something. I achieved something, and I reached out. My life isn't one long, indifferently narrated one-man show anymore. Sure, I'm still stuck underground, but I'm not alone down here anymore. SCP-5056 spoke up, giving one final thought. You are never alone, Philip. You will never, ever be alone. Never again. What's he saying? Something spooky? Dr. Nyo asked. Philip shook his head. It's phrased that way, but that's not how I'm taking it. The next morning, Philip prepared to take a life-changing step. He stood in front of a mirror, dressed in a tuxedo, and adjusted his bow tie. How do I look, Doug? He asked. Because I can't see with you in the mirror. SCP-5056 replied, You're making a mistake. Philip laughed it off. <laughs> yeah, I've never been good at bow ties. I'd use a clip-on, but Amy would never forgive me, and anyway, it would clash with the tuxedo. SCP-5056 pushed further, refusing to let it go. You aren't ready for this. I definitely am. But hey, if you have objections, feel free to shout them out at the appropriate time. Nobody but me will hear you, but if you make good points, I'll be sure to pass them along. You won't hold up your end. I'd do anything for her. You don't have the energy. I've never felt this good. Are you even trying here, buddy? It won't change who you are. It already has. It won't fix you. <laughs> Philip laughed, pulling his bow tie tight. He turned away from the mirror and toward the next chapter of his life with one final statement. I don't need to be fixed. As long as she had known him, Amelia Tarosian had demonstrated kindness, care, empathy, and curiosity toward Philip. Unlike her colleagues, she was not put off by the presence of SCP-5056, but approached it with an open mind and an appreciation for the entirety of Philip's self, the man beyond the anomaly. The two were married in Ipperwash Provincial Park on June 12, 2021, and have been together ever since. Notably, Amelia has reported that SCP-5056 remains largely dormant in her presence, allowing the two to spend their time together without interruption. Following Philip's relationship with Amelia and the improvement to his mental state, as well as changes to SCP-5056's behavior, the Foundation conducted a review and reassessment of the anomaly. Several high-ranking Foundation staff wrote down their changing thoughts on SCP-5056 and contributed them to the official revised file. Amelia R. Tarosian, chief of the janitorial and maintenance section and wife of Philip Deering, wrote, I don't think anyone understood Doug when he first manifested. They all thought he was an anomalous abuser, a demon with a short fuse, existing just to get a rise out of someone. They tell me Phil was plenty risable back then, introverted and absent-minded, the perfect jump scare target. But once he stopped being jumpy, Doug started needling him about his low self-esteem. Once he started standing up for himself, Doug made him worry about other people's needs. By the time I met him in 2019, Phil was considerate, unflappable, and still absolutely miserable. That's when Doug started bugging him about his love life. I don't think Doug is preying on Phil. I think he's trying to help. Dr. Harold R. Blank, chair of the Archives and Revision section, contributed, For the longest time, we thought Phil might be anomalous as well. We even tossed around the idea of classing him Thaumiel, which obviously didn't fly. At the very least, we were pretty sure Doug was an unconscious manifestation of his internal monologue, so we labeled it 5056-A and made him 5056-B. After nearly two decades of observation, however, I can say with near certainty that there is nothing at all remarkable about Philip Eugene Deering beyond his unusual equanimity in the face of enduring trauma. He is no longer considered an SCP object, and his paranormal paramour has been reclassified as simply SCP-5056 a self-containing, incorporeal emotional parasite requiring no containment because it voluntarily restricts itself to the presence of a man who voluntarily restricts himself to a secure underground bunker. We're still not sure what will happen when Phil dies, but my guess is 5056 gets one last class change, to neutralized. Dr. Melissa Bradbury, chair of the research and experimentation section included, Now I can't tell you what I saw, but I can tell you what I felt. That's only after more than a decade of Foundation psychotherapy, mind you. I was comatose for 11 months and endured three years of blurry vision because I couldn't put on a pair of specs or contact lenses without having a panic attack. When that thing filled up my vision, it felt like someone had gut-punched my brain. You know that late-night experience where you suddenly remember some stupid or embarrassing thing you did in your life and it makes you feel ashamed? Well, imagine if you suddenly thought of every stupid or embarrassing thing you'd ever done, all at once, like your conscience finally got fed up and 
decided to go nuclear on you. No wonder Falkirk tore his eye out. Delfina M. Ibanez, chief of the Pursuit and Suppression Section, had this to say. When Blank said we should let Deering keep playing janitor under his pet monster's watchful eye scars, I was skeptical. I was chief of security and containment, and that sounded like the polar opposite of both concepts. I'm happy to say I was wrong. Deering has absolutely nil combat utility, and without 5056, his disaster response priority would be somewhere just above the D-Class, and we don't even have D-Class at 43. But with 5056, he's practically an intruder deterrent system. You know what they say. A friend is someone who will help you move, a best friend is someone who will disintegrate your enemy's eyes. Dr. Noon T. Nyo, chair of the psychology and parapsychology section, wrote, SCP-5056 has co-opted JM-64's negative thought processes, externalizing his melancholy and self-doubt. His earliest psych evaluation suggested a proclivity towards intrusive anxious thoughts. Because these thoughts are now literally intrusive, he can assess them much more rationally than he could without anomalous intervention. We still don't know what 5056 is, but I can say this much. It is devoted to its opposite number, and wants to help him. It expresses affection in a grating, alien manner, but there's no arguing with the results. It's taken 19 years, but Deering has finally made peace with himself. Of course, he's had a little extra help in that regard. Finally, Dr. Polixeni Metaxas, chair of the spectrometry and spectrometry section, said, They've called this a haunting for 19 years. It's even entered the general terminology. A Deering class haunting denotes the stalking of a corporeal being by an incorporeal one. Nobody really thinks of 5056 as a ghost, however. Nobody but me. The materials handling disaster which created Doug also annihilated at least two of our subjects in containment. The nature of those subjects is highly classified, but I can say this much. They are intimately connected to the cycles of guilt and apathy through which human society writ large regularly cycles. Is it too much of a stretch to suggest that one of them, or a fragment of one of them, was reconstituted in that thaumaturgical soup into Deering's inescapable conscience? If that's what happened, well, perhaps it still doesn't make him all that different from the rest of us. We're all haunted by something, and we're all haunting something ourselves. Our hopes and fears are just voices in our heads that only we can hear. Everything we are is just the hallucination of a hollow frame of meat and bone. So what separates us from the thing on the other side of the mirror? three dimensions, and room to grow. Since the reassessment, the containment measures for SCP-5056 have been updated. It is now considered to be self-containing, with its position fixed to that of Philip. Philip is prohibited from leaving SCP Foundation facilities without direction from security clearance level 4 plus personnel, and must carry at least one reflective object on his person at all times. Any new or visiting staff must be briefed by Philip on the nature of SCP-5056. He is also required to undergo mental health treatment, mainly exposure response prevention therapy, which allows him to respond to his intrusive thoughts without acting on them. Though SCP-5056 once terrified Philip, bringing him endless distress, he has grown accustomed to its presence. Even when the things 5056 tells him are upsetting, he considers them to be necessary reflections of his inner life, providing him with introspection he has never been capable of on his own. Since Philip's marriage, the entity has grown more and more passive, appearing only to bring up areas that need improvement in the relationship, reminding Philip of ways he can be a better husband to Amelia. Just as Philip has become more comfortable with the presence of SCP-5056, so too has the rest of the Foundation staff. Perhaps, even if they're not entirely aware of it, they recognize something of themselves in that dynamic. Don't we all live with demons of our own, constant companions whispering our insecurities back to us, reminding us of the ways in which we fall short? They may not be as anomalous as SCP-5056, but their hold on us can be just as powerful, just as destructive. The only way to contain them is to look them in the face, learn to talk back, and decide against all odds to go after what we want anyway. We may never be truly rid of them, never be completely alone, and without that gray shadow lurking at our side. But that's okay. We can carry it with us, accepting that our fears, our hurts, our nagging anxieties are necessary parts of who we are. But we can also argue back against the voice that tells us we'll never be truly happy and say, yes, I will, because I deserve it. Eventually, we might just believe it enough for that voice to finally shut up. Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, like SCP-446, Human Mannequin for another haunting humanoid anomaly. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives.